Okay, in this video we are going to talk about heat. But before we get into heat, I just want to give you an equation. It's a simple equation, it's just delta E is equal to Q plus W. What does that mean? Well, delta E, if you remember, is change in internal energy. A change in internal energy, and that's measured in units of joules. All right, so what this equation says is the only way to change internal energy of a system is to heat it or cool it, because Q is heat. So it can gain or lose thermal energy, or it can do work on the uh, surroundings, or work, the surroundings can do work on it. So those are the only two ways to change internal energy of a system, heat and work. So we're going to talk about heat and work separately in this video. Obviously, we're going to talk about heat. So what is heat? Kind of talked about it in the last video. It's just the transfer of thermal energy. And hopefully, that looks like two Gs. Hopefully, you remember that it always goes from hot to cold. Okay, thermal energy cannot transfer hot to cold. Um, this is basically how your air conditioner or refrigerator, those are really the same thing, by the way, air conditioner and refrigerator are the same thing. Um, they work by taking hot air, by taking heat out of the air and moving it outside if, for an air conditioner or moving it outside of the refrigerator and into the room for a refrigerator. And by the way, a lot of people like me have a heat pump in their house instead of a um, like a, a gas furnace. So in the summer, you run that as an air conditioner. It takes heat from the house, puts it outside. In the winter, you it reverses and it takes uh, heat from outside and puts it inside. Okay, So it doesn't create heat, it just moves it around. Anyway, um, so heat can only transfer, or thermal energy can only transfer from hot things to cold things. When those two things get to the same temperature, they're at thermal equilibrium. No heat can flow at thermal, and we'll talk about this later too, equilibrium, that is to say, same temp, no, wow, no heat can flow because there is no hot and there is no cold. They're the same temperature. And that'll come, be key in probably the next video. Um, we'll talk about some examples, example calculations of this stuff. So, um, let's talk about quantities of heat, basically how much heat. How do we calculate heat, in other words? So one equation, very simple again, Q is equal to capital C delta T, and that capital is important. Okay. Q is heat measured in joules. Uh, delta T, you probably are familiar with delta T, that's change in temp. And change in temp is always T final minus T initial. And sometimes this gives you a positive number, sometimes it gives you a negative number. That's fine, that's what we're looking for, okay? But anytime we have a delta, it's final minus initial. And then C, that is what we call heat capacity. If you think of a water bottle, your water bottle has a capacity. I forgot, this is in units of delta or um, degree Celsius. Your water bottle has a, a capacity, this is how much water it can hold. Um, larger capacity can hold more water. Similar thing here with heat capacity. Units here are joules per degree Celsius. 
obviously that makes it all work out on both sides. Um, what this means is it is the amount of heat required to raise the temp of an object one degree Celsius. So high heat capacity, it can absorb a lot of heat before it goes up in temperature. I like to think of it as a big coffee cup and a small coffee cup. Okay, the big coffee cup has a high capacity, small coffee cup has a low capacity. Pour coffee into both of them at the same rate, the big coffee cup can absorb more before it overflows. The little coffee cup will not take as much coffee before it overflows. And what's the overflow in, the, in our analogy? That's the temperature going up. So the lower the, the heat capacity, the less heat it can take before the temp changes. And the, the, re, the same is true in reverse as well. Okay, so that's for an object. Now, we're not always going to deal with an object. This is chemistry class, of course. We don't look at objects, we look at substances. So let's give you that equation. Q is equal to MC, MC delta T, okay? And Q is heat, still in joules, nothing's changed there. M, you should be familiar with M, that's just mass. Um, delta T, still T final, minus T initial in units of degrees Celsius. I forgot units for mass, but it is of course grams. And then C, what is C? Well, now because we're talking about a substance, it has a different name, notice it's lowercase. This is called the specific heat capacity. Um, sometimes it's just referred to as specific heat, and sometimes it is referred to just as heat capacity. Uh, that's mostly because chemists physicists get lazy and they don't want to say the whole thing out, specific heat capacity. So if you hear somebody say specific heat, they're referring to um, that specific heat capacity. And usually when people talk about heat capacity, whoops, this is what they're talking about also. Um, but it is a little vague because the capital C is also heat capacity and it's a different uh, quantity. Anyway, this is the heat required to raise one gram of a substance one degree Celsius. And if you think back to the definition about calories, okay, he required to raise one gram of water in one degree Celsius. This is where the term calorie comes from or, or why we have that definition is from heat capacity. Okay, And this is for a substance. I guess I could just underline the word substance there, couldn't I? Okay, substance, not an object. So um, above the ob an object for heat capacity for this equation up here, okay, the mass is fixed. Notice there's no mass in this equation. Here, because we're dealing with a substance, we have mass now. That's the difference between the two. Okay, and in the next video, I'll do an example using this equation here for with specific heat capacity.